Hi everyone, this is Elise Valino. In this video, we're going to be discussing hand and probe positioning for basic views in an echocardiogram. The first view in our echo is the parasternal long view. So in order to obtain the parasternal long view, we're going to be using this phased array probe. This light indicates the probe marker on the probe. And to obtain the parasternal long axis view, we're going to put the probe to the left side of the patient's sternum with the probe marker pointing towards the left hip. We're gonna start at about the third or fourth intercostal space, and we're gonna to continue to move the probe until we see the heart. So we'll start next to the sternum and move out laterally. Didn't see the heart on this at this rib space, so we'll move down a rib space, back at the sternum, and move out laterally. Come back to the sternum, go down a rib space, and move out laterally, and repeat like this across the anterior aspect of the chest until you obtain the parasternal long view. Once you do find the heart, it will take some small adjustments of the probe in order to obtain the view that you're looking for. Ultimately, this is the view we want to obtain for the parasternal long view. The second view in our echo will be the parasternal short axis view. So in order to obtain that, we're gonna keep the probe where we had it for the parasternal long axis view with the left ventricle centered in the center of the screen. We're gonna turn the probe 90 degrees. So the probe marker, which was pointing at the patient's left hip is now gonna point at the patient's right hip. And we should see an image that looks like this on the screen. What you see on the screen here is that we're actually seeing the valves flickering in and out. And for the parasternal short view, we wanna be just below the level of the valves at the level of the papillary muscles, which you now see here and here on the screen. In order to do that, all I did was move my hand a bit like this to angle more towards the apex of the heart to see farther down into the ventricle. The next view in our echo is gonna be an apical four chamber view. So we're going to keep the probe in the same orientation. The probe marker is still pointed over here towards the patient's right hip and we're gonna slide the probe laterally on the patient's chest. In the apical four chamber view, we're trying to have the probe be at the apex of the heart, looking back up at the heart. So the ultrasound is gonna be scanning towards the patient's right shoulder or right scapula. If you're doing this scan on a patient with breast tissue, you'll need to be underneath the breast tissue in order to obtain this view. And if you're scanning on a patient who has cardiomegaly for any reason, you'll find that you might need to move the probe quite far over, almost all the way over into the anterior axillary line, versus if you're scanning on a patient with a normal size heart, you'll find that the view will be more on the anterior aspect of the chest like this. The view that we're looking to obtain in this view is shown on the screen here. So we see all four chambers of the heart with the right side of the heart over here and the left side of the heart over here. This view also shows a clear view of both valves as well as both free ventricular walls. The final view in our echo is a subxycoid view. So from where we have the probe position for the apical four, we're gonna keep the probe in the same orientation with the probe marker still pointed towards the patient's right. We're gonna slide the probe over to just beneath the xiphoid process. So you can palpate where the xiphoid process is on your patient and put the probe just underneath the xiphoid process. You'll notice that I did change my hand positioning here from like this to on top of the probe like this because we're gonna to need to flatten the probe in order to point the ultrasound up back towards the heart. In order to obtain this view, you will have to press the probe a bit down into the patient's abdomen in order to get the ultrasound to be able to see the heart. That means that this view is nearly impossible if your patient is sitting straight up or if they're particularly obese or have a distended abdomen. So in order to obtain this view, you'll have to have the patient lying supine and you will need to apply pressure into their abdomen. The view we're looking to obtain with this is shown on the screen here where we again see all four chambers of the heart. Thanks for joining us today. We look forward to seeing you in the upcoming hands-on session. If you have any questions, please don't hesitate to reach out to us at our email addresses listed here. Thanks.